Well, top of the morning to everybody. I'm encouraged as I wake up this morning to know that I've got another day to get some things right. And so I start off this morning by saying, welcome every one of you who, like myself, probably woke up this morning realizing that you didn't wake up on your own. You probably are realizing you woke up this morning because God had a plan in store for you. You woke up this morning, like myself, thinking, my God, here it is yet again another day. I thank you so much, Lord, for waking me up and giving me another chance and setting me on my way. And so I welcome all of you this morning to come together into fellowship and let us give God our best praise. Let us give him our best form of worship. Let us, let us all collectively and individually give him our hearts, give him our minds, and give him our souls. I know that this week has been a pressing week, not just for me, but for many of you as well. There's just so much going on around us. There's just so many things happening that are outside of our control. There are a lot of things that actually are within our control, but sometimes when you just feel the weight of the world on you, sometimes you feel isolated and all by yourself. Well, I want you to hear me and hear me clearly. The Lord will never leave you and he shall never forsake you. So even at your low, lowest and darkest moment, you are definitely not alone. And so this morning and this day, I pray your encouragement that you can join in on this service and feel free to communicate with us live. Um, we are coming right now um, through our normal live um, uh, social media uh, presence. But then we also have several that are on their cell phone devices calling in. And I want to encourage any of you viewers that if you want to call in while we are live, please feel free to do so at area code 515-606-8340. And I need to also remind myself of these lines because oftentimes... <laughs> uh, there are so many different lines going. I just want to make sure um, it is area code 515-606-5430. Good morning. Thank you for chiming. Good morning for, for chiming in with us. Um, once you dial area code 515-606-5430, um, you'll be prompted to enter your access code and to enter our live service, it is 330-834-POUND. Again, 330-834-POUND. So we thank God for all of those that are joining us by uh, social media. We also thank God for all of those that are joining us at live via our conference line. And we encourage those of you who have stated that sometimes you choose to just stay silent and, and private. Well, we respect your right to privacy as well. But I still want to yet encourage you that if the Lord should speak to you and if the Lord should encourage you to step up and stand up and at least give a shout out, if it's nothing else but to just say, good morning, people of faith, or hello, or I'm glad to be with you. But uh, we're so glad that you're here. We're going to get right into our service today. We don't want to be long before you. I'm so encouraged. I'm Pastor Sonny James, and I'm just excited that you found time to come and join us on this beautiful, beautiful day, whether it's storming or raining or flooding, or whether it's 100 degrees or lower. It doesn't matter what's going on outside. What we're focused on is what God is doing on the inside of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so we thank God for each of you because this is the day the Lord has made. We should rejoice and we will rejoice and be glad in it because if it had not been for the grace of God, oh my Lord, where would I be right now? Oh, Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Hallelujah. for your presence. So Hallelujah. we're going to go ahead and get into our service. Um, if Sister Valerie uh, Bryan is with us this morning, I'm going to 
uh, ask her to bless us with inviting the Lord's presence in with us on this morning service. And I would be so delighted if the rest of you would tune in and turn your hearts to the Lord and let us prepare the way for the Lord to join us this morning. God bless. Sister Valerie. Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Good morning. We thank the Lord. We're going to pray right now. Lord, Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Lord. And putting us in our right mind because today is the day to serve you. Yes, Lord. This is your day. Most of all, my Father, I ask that you help us all with this pandemic that we're going through. Keep us safe and strong. And let us press our way towards you, because you are worthy to be praised. Yes. And we Lord. just want to say thank you for all that you've done and thank continue you. to do it. Thank you. And we love you. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord Savior, say we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank amen. God for you. We thank God for that. Uh, wonderful invite and covering this service in prayer today. You know, as as I go in a way, uh, went about my way this week, there were so many distractions and so many obstacles that came before me. And I began to just speak unto the Lord and pray and just watching those around me, watching things uh, afar uh, in the media and in the community and, you know, I really just said, Lord, eliminate the distractions. Allow me to stay rooted in you. Allow me to stay uh, strong in my base. Allow me, give me the opportunity, oh God, to continue to strive and press toward that mark of the most high calling. And I know that if, if my week has been oppressed, well, there might be somebody watching right now that can say, amen, brother, what a press I have faced this week. But I want you to be encouraged this day because this is the day right now, this very hour, this very moment, in spite of all the obstacles, in spite of everything that uh, has come our way, what I'm so excited about is when I sit back and I reflect and I take time to just hear from the Lord and I can just feel his presence consuming me and reminding me nothing can happen but by his permissive will. And people of faith, when I think about that, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and how he set me free, as the song says, sometimes I'm driving in my car and all I can do is pull over and just start to dancing and shouting because he is so good. Hallelujah. He is so amazing. When I just take time out to stop focusing on my journey, when I just take time out to start allowing God to show me that everything good that's happened, it did not happen but by his permissive will. Hallelujah. Everything that wasn't so good. Hallelujah. If it doesn't matter how horrific it was, when I look around the country, when I look around my community, even when I look around my own family, hallelujah, I have to be reminded and encouraged that whatever is going on, praise be to God, it is going on only by his permissive will. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Oh, my goodness. That is enough to just make you, hallelujah, that's enough to make you scream and shout. Thank you, oh God. I mean, just take a moment with me, people of faith, and just look back over. You don't have to, like the song says, when I look back over my life, you don't have to look that far back, amen. You can look into your yesterday, hallelujah. You can look into your last week, hallelujah. Oh, my God, I know that I'm talking to the right people of faith. You see, because the Bible, those 66 books of the Bible, those are words of encouragement and direction and guidance and full of examples. Why did God put those things in writing? He put them in writing, people of faith, that we would have a roadmap to success, that we would have a for sure winning ticket. Some folks put their heart and their minds into that lotto. Now, 
I personally don't prescribe to it. However, when some people play the lotto, there's they put in some crazy numbers and they're really counting on, boy, this is my day. This is my hour. This is my chance. This is my time. Well, I want to tell you, when I look at the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, and I see where he's brought me from, and I see the people he's connecting me to, and I see the times that he just forgives me and overlooks my, myself and how maybe I might think at times or things that I've done at times. And I look toward the hills from whence cometh my help. Hallelujah. I wish I had somebody this morning that can just say, Jesus, he's talking to me right now. I'm telling you, when I look, when I get past myself, oh my God, I just see God in all that he's done for me, all that he's you know, he's allowed me to abandon some things. He's allowed me to put down some people. He's allowed me to set down some ways. He's allowed me to, you know, stop focusing on certain things or certain people. And I want to encourage you today. You can do the same. My God, my God, where you've come from this past week, the obstacles that many people of faith all over the world have had to press their way through. My God, we're talking right now to some of the most chosen vessels that God has ever created on planet. However, it's the enemy's job. Hallelujah. It's the enemy's job to come in and rob you of your joy, to kill your visions, hallelujah, to distract you with all the things that are going on around you. But I'm here to tell you right now, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, people of faith. God has called you for such a time as this. All that we've gone through, somebody should just shout hallelujah. Oh my God, all that God has allowed you to go through, he's allowed you to go through it because he knew that this day would come in your life. He knew that you would still be here with your eyes open. He knew you would be here with your heart still lined and lined up towards him. He knew that this was the day that he would make that you could rejoice, hallelujah, and be glad in it. So this week, hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. So people of faith, wherever you stand right now, wherever you sit right now, I know that things may not, hallelujah, have looked the way you wanted them to look. In fact, if you had a, a crystal ball, as they used to say, and if you could look into that crystal ball and see your future, my God, spiritually, I'm believing God has great things for his people. I'm believing God is going to lift up a mighty warrior in you right now as you allow God to minister to your soul, as you allow God to just swell up inside of you and allow you to just realize you are the absolute best that God has to offer. And don't get that twisted, shortcake. I'm so excited this morning, wherever you sit right now. You see, when we have our own agenda for church, you know, people hear me say um, COVID has been a good thing. COVID's not a good thing. And I don't mean it that way. But when I look to the hills from which cometh my help, and I realize that my help cometh from the Lord, I look even during the times of COVID-19, and I say, my God, I may not have been thinking this way had you not allowed something to come into our world, a plague that could come in and slow us down and turn our hearts from our own affections, turn our mind and praise God for whoever chimed in on the line. I thank God for you. And whether you want to speak. Uh, excuse me, speak out today or whatever. We just thank God for you joining in on the service. We pray God bless you today. But I want you to see good in yourself. I want you to see the good that God has put in you. And even when things around us, people of faith, don't look right, don't sound right, don't smell right, don't taste right. 
I want you to know that God is still yet in control. And I'm hearing stories of how young folks that normally run the street all day and night, now they come home and they check in on big mama. They check in on mama. They check in on their younger siblings. My God, God is doing something, people of faith. We just have to get out of the way, hallelujah, and let go and let God. I'm believing with you right now. I know some of you right now have family members that act like they toe up from the dark on floor up. I know that you've got some family members that you praying over them, you are praying for them, you're praying with them, but yet they still act like they just are flat out plain ghostly lost. I mean, as if they don't even know what's right before them. They sometimes act like they are running amok and they have no knowledge of the hours that you lay in agony praying over their souls. But this is the day, people of faith, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Bless your Lord. Bless your Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your Lord. Bless your Father. I know that when I approach the word of God and I say, Lord, I need your guidance. I need you to lead, guide, and direct me. I know that I don't stand alone. This morning is a brand new start for many of us. We're able to forget about yesterday, forget about our past, and allow God to help us focus on our future. My God. Do, does anybody out there listening right now, can we confess and say, Lord, I need a new beginning? I need a new start. The stuff that's been behind me, oh my, people that have come up against me, even when I go to church sometimes, anybody ever been to church and just feel like, oh my goodness, where in the world are the people of faith? <laughs> where in the world are the, the people of faith? You see, the enemy doesn't care that we come to church on Sunday or midweek service or whatever. The enemy knows that he needs to distract us to that we can be discouraged. Anybody can ever honestly say that they felt discouraged this week? Anybody can actually say that they felt like the, 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 the deck was stacked up against them this month? Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. 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 You see, hallelujah is the highest form of praise. Hallelujah is the highest form of praise. So in spite of it all, the Bible encourages us, you know, when the praises go up, hallelujah, the blessings come down. Who can stand to be blessed this morning? Who can stand for a blessing today? Just reach out, lift your hands, and just say, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, we've got to put that devil on notice. We've got to let that devil know, devil, I know that I'm the elect of God. I know that I'm called to be the head and not the tail. I know that your job is to try to distract me. I know that your job is to try to take my focus away. I know that you're going to come to me in ways that are common to man. The Bible tells me that. So I'm going to count it joy when things don't look right. I'm going to count it joy when the job don't seem right or the job just goes away. When my finances don't seem right. When my finances are all out of whack. When sometimes I give and give and give and at the end of the day it looks like I don't have enough to meet ends meet. Well, I'm here to tell you right now no weapon. And when I say no weapon, I'm talking not even my mind, not even my finances, not even my housing, not my friendships, not my children, not my spouse, not my friends, not my mama, not my daddy, not my cousins, especially not the first cousins. You know what I say about them. Hallelujah. It's about me and Jesus. It's about what God has for me this day. It's about God encouraging me this day. I don't care what's on my left. The Bible in Psalms 91 7 tells us a thousand may fall at thy left side, 10,000 on my right. But my promise is no matter what, 
none shall come nigh thee. So when I look to the hills from which cometh my help, people say, well, well, you know, I want to go to a church where they get real deep in the Bible. I need a church where, ooh, I need, I need to feel like heaven's falling when that man of God speaks. Hogwash. What you need is a touch from Jesus and Jesus alone. You don't need me. You don't need your next door neighbor. You don't need that guy or that woman down the street. You need Jesus. And where there's Jesus, there's liberty. And where there's liberty, there's hope. And where there's hope, there's life. And where there's life, there's joy. And the Bible says that Jesus came. Jesus suffered that none be lost. He came that we might have, hallelujah, life and that more abundantly. So I want to tell you this morning, if you don't get anything else out of this service today, I want you to look toward the hills from which cometh your help. And I want you to be able to say to that devil, Satan, get thee behind me. I am called into this right now. I know that God has something in store for me right now. I don't care if I've been late on my job every day in the past life. I don't care if I curse like a sailor. I don't care if I was falling into a drunken stupor. I don't care if I was doing things that didn't please God yesterday. Satan, get thee behind me because I am the absolute best that God has to offer. Don't get it twisted, shortcake. God counts on me. God needs me. God loves me. And God will use me. Stop reminding me of how many marriages I've had. Stop reminding me how I curse like a sailor. Stop reminding me how I use drugs. Stop reminding me how I did this. Stop reminding me of how I did that. Stop reminding me of how I fell short. Stop reminding me how I'm not who God says I am because I am the absolute best that God has to offer. And I'm so glad about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song says, when I look back over my life, thank you, Jesus. And I think things over. I can truly say that I've been blessed in spite of it all, in spite of my comings and my goings, in spite of my ups, in spite of my downs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God that we serve a God that doesn't look upon our past shortcomings. I thank God that God loves us more than we can even understand the term love. I thank God for the depth of his love. I thank God for the depth of his patience. I mean, when I look at some of the people that I've had a hard time forgiving, I just feel like sometimes somebody needs to just take me, straighten my neck up and just slap me left and right, left and right about a thousand times times because sometimes God does so many awesome things for us and then we forget how good he's been to us. So it's hard for us to forgive people, to be patient with people, to overlook their shortcomings. But I'm here to tell you, to tell you I don't care if you're sitting in a prison cell. I don't care if you're laying on a hospital bed and somebody told you you're nearing the end of your life. I don't really give a rat's patootie tootie tootie. What I care about is that this is the day that the Lord has made. And I want to help you get it right. There was a song that says, um, um, I can't even, oh, Heavenly Father, you just got me so consumed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We've got to get to the point, people of faith, where we can stop going to God so much about our problems and start going to our problems about our God. Can you imagine what that would look like if you just start talking to that problem and saying, problem, you're on short notice now. You're on real short notice. You're about to get evicted. You're about to just be cast away. You're about to be shucked away from me. You're about to be loosed out of here. The Bible says, whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth, devil, it's going to be loosed in heaven. Aha! My God is so good. 
That song just swells up in me that says, my God is awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> you see, in spite of what you've got going on, when the praises go up, hallelujah, God just takes your mind off of your current situation. God takes your mind off of your past. God takes your mind when you fell short. We already know in Romans 3.23, the Bible tells us, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Can anybody listening, can anybody watching right now, just lift your spirit up, stick your chest out and say, yes, I have fallen short of the glory of God, but I'm still the absolute best that God has to offer. Hallelujah. God wants to use you today. God wants to take everything good, bad, and the pretty and the ugly. He wants to take that hallelujah, and he wants to swell inside of you a testimony that when you, I'm so, listen, I have an older gentleman, Deacon Robert McCrary. Sometimes I call that, he has no idea. Sometimes I call that brother because I know God is going to speak to me in spite of what I'm going through, in spite of the obstacles that face me, in spite of my shortcomings. I know that I'm surrounded by people of faith, hallelujah, that are going to speak and download something into my spirit that's going to encourage me, hallelujah. I thank God for the people of faith that God has surrounded me with. I thank God for the people of faith that are in my family. I thank God for the people of faith in my community. I thank God for God. I thank God for his son, Jesus Christ. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We go into churches and they ask, anybody have a testimony? And everybody just, mm. my God. With God being so good, I don't even know how we get to the word sometimes. The churches should, should be full of people just shouting out, glory. Let me tell you how good God has been to me, baby. Let me share with you what God's brought me through, baby. All that I've been through, there are a whole lot of people that didn't make it out. But to God be the glory, I am the absolute best that God has to offer. And now, people of faith, I'm ready to hear from the Lord. I'm ready. Hallelujah. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to, I just want to open the airways for just a moment. I thank God for those that are that are that are on with us by way of social media. I thank God for those that are finding themselves in a position or in places they didn't want to be or didn't think they would ever be. But I thank God for you tuning in and allowing the Holy Spirit to encourage you this day. I thank God for what God is going to do in your life. Hallelujah. I want to open the airways just briefly here. If there is one that would have a a, a brief testimony, and, and on today I am going to ask that we make them brief so that we don't uh, we're not long before the people of faith today. I want to be faithful. I thank God for your time. But, you know, we don't always have to come together and take hours and hours and hours. I remember growing up, sometimes I'd go to these churches, and, boy, it felt like I'd be in church all day, all afternoon, and all night. Now, let me be honest with you. I probably needed every one of those services, truth be told. <laughs> but on this day, I want us to get in. I want us to get it. I want us to worship him, praise him, acknowledge him in all our ways, and trust that he shall direct our path according to the word of God. Amen. So if we have one or two that would like to chime in, again, I want to slow things down and I want to give our listeners an opportunity. If the Lord is speaking to your heart, if the Lord is encouraging you, if your morning is starting off different than what you felt it would, if God is doing anything for you, I want to open the airways and allow the people of faith all over the country to hear your words of encouragement. So those of you who are watching, if you want to call in, if, you, if the Lord is touching your heart, hallelujah, dial in at area code 515. 606-5430 and enter the access code 
1-800-834-POUND. We would love to hear your heart. We would love to be encouraged by your wisdom. Thank God for all of you who continually seek the kingdom of heaven. I thank God for you. The airways are open here momentarily that those of you that want to give a shout out to the Lord and what he's brought you through and what he's continuing to bring you through. And maybe it's something you're thanking him for. Maybe it's something that you need us to stand with you in agreement on. This is the time that you can come before the people of faith and you can lay it at the feet of God and just say, Lord, have your way with this thing and have your way with me. The lines are open. Do we have anyone that would like to just participate in the service today and be a blessing to the people of faith? Amen. 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 I'm going to open the airways and I'm going to ask that uh, Sister Victoria, um, just, I know she's been going through a lot and <laughs> her week has been full of a lot, but yet she's been such an encouragement. I was talking to a young woman just last evening and she said, you know, that one sister, man, she blesses me. <laughs> and I thought for a moment, wow, <laughs> if you only knew what that sister's got on her plate, though, if you only knew, <laughs> you see, people of faith, that's why it's so important that your testimony rain out. That's why it's so important that you show up so God can show out. It's not just about us. It's about the God we serve. Are you willing to be used by God today? Are you open for God yes. to just use you? Hallelujah. Yes. Sister Victoria, Hallelujah. if you just, just, just real brief, just real brief, if you will just bless the people of faith this morning, I'd be so grateful. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I love you all. So glad you're on the line. Thank you, Lord. Bye. Friday was a, a really rough day for me. Mm. Um, I've been speaking to Pastor about my job, the job that the, the Lord blessed me with, and how difficult my boss is at times. But I continually keep her in prayer. And Friday, I so wanted to be at the function that the pastor put together. Mm. Even though I knew I was supposed to be home cooking for a, uh, a service that was happening Saturday morning. Mm. But you know, God is good because <laughs> he let me be there mm. for a little while so I could meet the people, friends, mm. people that love God. And council members showed up. Mm. That's why I know God is in it. <laughs> And, and then I got home and I was able to cook and get the things done that I needed to for the service for the next morning. Bless so I, I just want to tell you, God will let you do the things that you need to do. <laughs> and I God. have to tell you, your heart has got to be in the right place. Mm. Your heart has got to be in the right place. Mm. And I was just in scripture this morning in Second Chronicles where it talked about Solomon preparing the building, the temple. Come on now. Well, we are the temple. Come on now. And we have to keep these temples straight. <laughs> and the way that God would have them to be. Amen. So I give God the praise this morning. Amen. I give him the praise and Hallelujah. the glory and the honor. <laughs> and I thank him for everything he is doing yes. in my life. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 <laughs> and see, nobody knows how important it was for me to be there for the pastor Friday. Mm. It, was, it was very important to me. Bless and God me. knew that. And he allowed me some time. And I mm. thank him for that. I thank him for that. And I thank him for my pastor and his family. Mm. And you. I thank you all. And I give God the praise and the honor and the glory. And the glory. For all that he's done for yes. me. Yes, 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 Lord. 
Mm, bless you, Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And you know, he's no respecter of persons, people of faith. What he'll do for one, he desires and can and will do for others. Amen. Amen. Isn't that awesome Amen. to know Amen. That, Amen. that our day Amen. is coming? <laughs> That's why we don't have to be jealous when other when we see God blessing other folks. We don't have to be jealous. We don't have to be consumed with, with contempt. No. Bless the Lord for what he's doing. Because what he will do for one, he'll do for you if you let him. Uh -huh. Amen. Bless the Lord. We thank God for that wonderful sharing. Thank you for blessing us. And yes, your presence. In fact, this young woman had just gotten a new job and she kept texting saying, can you send somebody to come and get me? Maybe I can leave work. I need to be there. I want to be there. I want to be in the presence. I want to be a part of a movement that's changing hearts and changing minds and changing lives. Oh, and is that one woman going to be there? <laughs> so bless the Lord, oh my soul. Thank God for you. Would there be another that would just want to share today? Uh, just want to give a shout out to the Lord. Um, the, mic, the, the, the mic is open. Uh, Hallelujah. I would like to. Who, who, who do, bless the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I would just like to say that how God, good God has been to me. Mm. And he's been so good. <laughs> and it's taken me a long time to see it. But I have been going through um, a pretty difficult separation with my husband for years. And um, we have a lot of love for each other. However, that man is so trifling. But, but God, because it took a trifling man like that to make me see how trifling I was. Mm. In my wow. And, Praise and, the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we have a lot of love for each other, but we got a lot of junk in both of our tongues. <laughs> so we just, <laughs> just need to learn how to let that love guide us to the ultimate love of God and mm, bless you, Jesus. Back on the right page. Bless uh, her, Lord. I know I'm a part of a church that got some powerful prayer warriors in it. Mm. And I just want to ask y'all to please, please ask God for us to just guide us in the direction he wants us to Thank come. you, Lord. Bless her, Father. And so that the foundation for our children to be strong. Yes. And the foundation for us to be strong is to continue us in the path together. So, I just want to thank God for showing me me. Mm, <laughs> bless the Lord. Somebody else, I just want to thank God for all he has done. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And today we're going to do just <laughs> that. Did someone say something? Yes, Pastor. The young lady that just spoke. I give God glory and honor that she would stay her post and keep her covenant that she made with God and her husband. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you see, people of faith, you know, the Bible says, forsake not the assembly of ourselves together. And so often people fool themselves and say, well, I don't need to go to church. You know, I, you know, I got God in my heart. Well, you might have God in your heart. But with all that God has brought you through, you need to show up and show out and let go and let God so that God can bless somebody else through your own trifling ways. I mean, if you stay hidden... How do I get hope? How am I encouraged? Sure, I can read the word. Sure, I can call the deacon. Sure, I can call the pastor. But there's nothing like, there's nothing better 
then I can just lean on a friend sometimes and I can hear the words of testimony, the words of encouragement. When that friend can say, oh, Sister Riddle, I'm so blessed. Did you hear her people of faith say trifling? I mean, it took a trifling man for me to see how trifling I was and how trifling I am. My God, my God. I know right now somebody listening to, to, to Sister Riddle say that she has been trifling. I know many of you listening right now can hold up your right hand and say, "Woo, that's just talking about me right there. When you're talking about trifling, I'm trifling on top of trifling. I'm, tri I'm so trifling, trifling can't even find my trifling. But God, but God. Do you see people of faith? You have got to, you've got to show up because when you show up, God shows out through you. You can be such a blessing to people that are going through. If we just stop judging them, so what if they're toe up from the floor up? So what if they're trifling? You haven't been Amen. far off yourself in some areas of your life. Now, I know some of you holy rollers are listening or watching and saying, well, pastor, that wasn't my journey. You know, I've always been in church all my life. I've always been a good girl. I've always been a good dude. You know, pastor, I went to Sunday school. I was the usher. You know, I did this and I did that. But what you're not going to tell people is when you sit next to a person consumed with alcohol, how you seem to just scoot over a few inches away. What you're not going to tell people is that when you met that girl who was living a, 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 a wild lifestyle, you thought to yourself, now she need to stop tripping. She need to stop what she doing. You don't tell people that judgmental heart that you have. Yes, you might be the choir boy. Yes, you might be the altar boy. Yes, you might do prayer in your church. Yes, you might even be the choir director. You might be the worship leader. But what you're not telling people are those drinks of alcohol you consume when you go to your favorite uh, uh, party wing uh, outing. What you're not telling people is when those waitresses walk by, how your eyeball just seemed to shift right alongside her waistline. See, what you're not telling people is how you also have fallen short of the glory of God. What you're not telling people is that God is still yet working on you. What you're not telling people is that you have not yet arrived. What you're not telling people is that you still need God because you know you are still tore up from the floor up yourself. You are not being faithful in your tithes and in your offering. You're not being faithful to your children. You're not being faithful to that spouse. You still have a judgmental heart. You still hold anger towards somebody. You need to just admit to yourself, God, I'll need you. God, I love you. And I need to forgive those that don't do it just the way I may not, Father God. I need your help. I need your guidance. Father God, I'm going to acknowledge you in all my ways, and I'm going to trust that you shall direct my path. So Lord God, take me right now the way that I am. Change my heart. Mold me. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. I'm going to open the airways now for prayer. Uh, uh, um, we've, we, I know that um, there are a lot of people that, that have not been able to call in, or some are on the line, and, 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 I, and I appreciate and I respect your right to privacy that you, you just don't feel comfortable speaking up at this time. Well, God bless you anyhow, because God will swell up his spirit in you so much where you will be compelled to just shout. You will be compelled. You will have no other choice but to shout out the goodness of God. But just as Jesus is patient with you, so are we. Amen. But we're going to ask my wife, my partner in the ministry, if she will just pray for all of those needs, even those unspoken needs, all of those unspoken requests. Maybe some of you are struggling in your finances and you have a hard time believing that, hey, well, Malachi 3, 8 through 10 says, will a man rob God? Maybe you're struggling in your relationships. Maybe your health is not where you want it to be. Maybe your faith needs a boost up. Whatever it may be, I'm going to ask now that you just join your hearts with us. And Sister Kirsten James just prays for you, 
prays with you and covers us all with the grace and the love of God. Sister Kirsten. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Let us pray. Bless the Lord. Heavenly Father, we bless you, Father, we bless you, Lord God, and we thank you for once again allowing us to come into the house of prayer, Lord, come into the house of prayer, Lord, come together, we thank you, Lord God, 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 thank you,
What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you, Lord. Oh, we thank God for you people of faith on this day. We bless you. We bless your coming in and your going out. We thank you now for just coming together and aligning your hearts one to another and thanking God first and foremost. Hallelujah. 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 I want to challenge you this day. If you will just dare yourself to just begin to give God more praise. I mean, throughout your day, I want to challenge you because reading the word of God and worshiping God in spirit and in truth, it swells up such a level of maturity and wisdom, focus, drive, and passion that it allows you, it allows God in you to elevate you above your current and present situation. And yes, people of faith, we are dealing with some horrific times, but we've got an awesome God. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, as I, as I look to prepare and ask God to 
um, lead, guide, and direct. It is my prayer that every time the word of God is shared, that first God minister to me, not being selfish, but just being focused. That my prayer is that he first minister wisdom unto me. And then he allows the word of God to be shared in such a practical way that those who are listening can take that practical word and make it applicable in their own lives. And then for some of us, some of you, some of you listening, some of you watching right now, God has called you for such a time as this, right out of your mother's womb. That hour was predestinated. Your existence was already planned. Now we serve a God that gives us free will. But I want to challenge you today. You didn't get here by happen chance. You were a part of a divine anointed plan of God. So while you're here, you may as well let go and let God and let God use you the way he's designed to use you. Hallelujah. Your gifting is your gifting. You are the absolute best that God has to offer. And your testimony, your journey may not be mine, but God can take where he's taken you from. He can take that journey. He can take that, that set of wisdom. He can take that milestone, that history, that awesome revelation of an experience that he's allowed you to walk through. And he can launch you into your destiny, that he can use you to help set the captives free. Anybody listening today can actually say, Lord, I'm ready to be used. Lord, I'm ready to be used. Hallelujah. I'm ready that you launch me into what you have for me. Take me now, Lord, and swell up inside of me so much, oh God, that all I can say is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 hallelujah. Father God, as we partake of your word now, we ask, oh God, that you take one small nugget, one just small nugget of your word and plant it so far in the pit of our souls that it take root and it began to manifest itself through our earthly vessels. That all those that stand by and look upon us, oh God, they will not see us, but they will be consumed by your presence in us. And they will be compelled to turn. And they will be compelled and challenged, oh God, to lean not on their own understanding, but to acknowledge you in all their ways and be compelled to come. Help us, O oh God, to be living vessels, ready and able to set the captives free, that you get all the honor, you get all the glory, you get all the praise. We shall put no God before you. We shall only worship the most high, the most authority, a living king, Jehovah, hallelujah, Yahshua, thank you, O oh God. We serve a God of many names, but there's only but one true God. There's only but one true makers of heaven and earth. There's only one true God who created us. And we give you the honor. We give you the glory. We praise you. In the name of Jesus, whereby every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. We need you this day, Lord. Now strengthen us through your word. Teach us to be all that you design us to be. 
one word at a time. Have your way now, God, in your people of faith. Change us, God. Mold us after your image, in your likeness, that you get the honor, the glory, and the praise. Launch your people right now. Many are called. Few are chosen. Speak now to those chosen vessels that are called out of the darkness that they've once walked in, that are called out of that trifling state, that are called out of anything that does not give you the glory that you deserve. We honor you right now, Lord. Show us favor and right, rightly divide your word of truth that we can make it practical Keep it practical, that it becomes applicable in our daily lives. And then for some of us that are called to this, that we can make it deliverable, that you get the glory, the honor, and the praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I was Hallelujah. encouraged this week... <laughs> You know, what amazes me is when I look at us church folk and we want to act as though we've got it all together. But sometimes we are so confused. Sometimes we're walking around lonely. Sometimes we're walking in a like in a cloud, like there's something over our eyes. We know what's around us. We know what's there. But sometimes that little doubt comes in. Sometimes when things don't look the way that you think it should, sometimes our faith wavers. Well, I want to tell you today that the Bible tells us without faith, it is impossible to please God. So then we have to ask, well, what level of faith are we needing? What type of faith is God most pleased with? What could take me out of my current situation, my current status, my current being, and what could elevate my mind to such a level to where I can truly sit back and say, Lord, for you, I'll live and for you, I'll die. Father, I am a true vessel. Open, Father God, for whatever you want, whatever direction you would have me to go. And I want to tell you today that if I had to title this message, it would be my faith is back. And I want you to sit right where you are because I know I'm talking to the right people. I know sometimes there are things that have gone on in our life where our faith has shaken. Our faith has wavered just a little bit. Even if our faith didn't waver, our eyes just got off of the mark for a second because we've been hurt by somebody. We've been, been just been treated so bad. So this day, I want us to just stand up and say, my faith is back. My faith is back. My faith is back. And now I want to just turn to the word of God and we can lean not on our own understanding, but we can say, Lord, what kind of faith are you really talking about? I know your word says that we should have faith of a mustard seed. I know that that mustard seed is the tiniest seed in the world, but it produces mega, 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 mega. I understand that. But what I need to know is, can you show me in a real practical way? the level of faith that you're talking about. How can I make that applicable to my world, to my life, to my existence, that I can then share in my testimony and make it deliverable so that someone can receive me right in the vernacular that I stand. I might not be the best song person in the world. I might not be able to read as well as somebody else. I may not even know the word of God like everybody else knows the word of God. But Father God, you called me to this. You created me. You called me out of my mother's womb to such a time as this. Now, Father God, swell in me a level of faith. Teach me, Father God, how to be that vessel that you are so proud of. Teach me how to stay in my lane. Just because you share something with me once doesn't mean I'm a prophet or a prophetess. Just because you allow me to lay hands on the sick and they become healed, it doesn't mean, Father God, that I'm going to go to the nations and go to the masses and do the same thing. If you only call me to use me that one time, allow me to be good in that. But Father God, swell up in me what you have for me. Give me my portion that you have it back. Hand it to me that I can toss it back to you. Bless the Lord. 
we're going to come today and share with one another, amen, the word of God coming from the book of Genesis. Now, the book of Genesis is not very difficult to find because if you open your Bibles, well, it's the very first book. <laughs> he made it so easy for us. I want you to turn to the 22nd chapter. My prayer is that these first 18 verses will allow you to say, Father, my faith is back. My prayer is that you will get an example of how deep our faith can go. When I read this text, oh, and I've read it a ton of times, but something about this time in my life, when I read it, it just takes my level of understanding to a whole nother level. I pray you're ready to go to another level today. Join with us in the word of God. Genesis, the 22nd chapter, starting in the first verse. And it reads, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abram. So watch this now, watch this, that God did tempt Abraham. <laughs> what, what were we talking about earlier? No matter what's going on around us, we have to constantly be reminded nothing good, bad, or indifferent happens but by his permissive will. My God, all of my shortcomings, he knew they were going to be short. All of my advances, he knew I was going to be advanced. My God. And it says, and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, behold, here I am. Verse 2 says, and he said, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Verse four. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Let, let, me, let, let me share something with you. I want to I make sure that you're watching and seeing God move. First of all, God spoke. God gave direction. Notice his posture. When God is speaking, sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes God has told us to do some stuff that we have to sometimes go, My God, God, is that you talking to me? Is that you really? Because you know how these people acted. Now, you really want me to go such and such? You really want me to go on that job? Now, you know they don't even like me over there. But notice the posture of Abraham. Notice how he girds up to follow. A lot of times, part of the hesitation or part of our lack or our distraction is our lack of our ability to follow. You see, sometimes we feel we have to know the beginning, the middle, and the end before we can step out. Uh-oh. Is that speaking to anybody today? Hallelujah. I know it speaks to me. You see, if it don't just look right, if it don't just sound right, sometimes I'm hesitant. Sometimes I'm saying, wait a minute. Now, give me a little more clarity on this situation. Talk to me where I can hear what you're saying. And what he's saying is, be quiet and learn to follow. I have the ultimate plan. I know your beginning. I know your middle. And I know your end. Just be quiet and follow. I know we're talking to somebody on that one. It's okay. You might not be able to call in and say, ouch. I'm going to say it for you. Ouch. Hallelujah. Verse 5, And Abraham said unto his young men, 
Abide ye here with the ash, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Uh, hold, hold on one second. Someone's been trying to call in. I'm going to ask Sister Kirsten to step away and, and to see what we can do to help them into the service. Amen. I put my ear in my ears so I could talk to you. Amen. Bless the Lord. Is is that someone at hello? Did someone say something? Amen. We'll continue. Amen. And I thank God for those of you that are continuing to join in on the service. Bless the Lord for you. And um we will give an opportunity here shortly to open the mic and to give you an opportunity to share with us and the Lord under your spirit today. And so it says, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Now, now I, I, I wanna, you see, we serve a God whom cannot lie. So why is Abraham here saying, me and the lad are gonna go afar? And we are going to do what thus say the Lord. And then we're going to come back. So would that mean that Abraham is a liar? Would that mean that God didn't know what he was doing? That doesn't mean any of that. You see, when you let go and let God, what you're really saying is, it doesn't matter what happens, what we're going to do, how it looks, God is still going to get the glory. And my level of faith says, I don't know how, I don't know when, hallelujah, I'm speaking to somebody right now. Can you honestly admit that there are things going on in your life you don't know how, you don't know when, you don't know why, you don't know even if. But you can feel God pressing upon your level of faith. You can feel God swelling up in you to where you can say, Lord, even though it don't look right, my faith is back. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. So he says, hallelujah. hallelujah. In verse six. Now, this is where we take off here. OK, I want you to be with me. It says, and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they both went, both of them together. My God. My God, wait a second. So you mean to tell me the people that are around me that watch me follow God? That if my faith is so strong, even the people around me, watch this, even the people around me may follow you see, you have to imagine this son at least had a brain. This son at least had a mouthpiece. This son at least had a heartbeat beating. Boom, 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 boom. Yet in the word of God, it says, he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake until Abraham, here's his mouthpiece, and said, my father, and he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? <laughs> All the way on that journey. This text is showing neither one of them are dumb. Neither one of them are stupid. I'm getting ready to go to a barren land. I'm getting ready to go to some place where, you know, it ain't a whole lot of flock running around the mountains up there. So I see the wood and I and I see the fire and 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 just the question. Uh where's the sacrifice? You see sometimes things don't look right, but yet it's right in front of us. Can somebody say that? Now that speaks to me. You ever been in a place where you know what it takes, but you know God is still calling you to finish your work. And it just don't look like everything's there. But in your heart, you know you got everything you need. You see, change your posture so that your faith can grow. 
Change how you look at a thing so that your faith can grow. Change what you're believing so that your faith can grow. At the end of today, I want you to be able to shout on the mountaintop, my faith is back. Not that some of us waver in our faith, but sometimes the reason things don't move is because we forget that God gives us that power and that authority to speak a thing as though it were. The Bible tells us that we can speak to that mountain and say, be thou removed, and it's gone. My faith is back because I'm realizing even though it doesn't look right, even though it doesn't look like I have everything that I need, I am more than able, I am more than capable to accomplish this job. Well, I'm not going to go for that supervisor job because I don't have any experience. I'm not going to go for that IT tech job because I'm not really tech savvy. I'm not going to go for such and such because I don't have the experience. If God is leading you, if God is swelling it up in you, then that means God has already equipped you to handle what he needs you to do. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And so in verse seven, and Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, my father. And he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. He said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Now, again, do we say that he's just off his rocker? No, because earlier he already said, you take him on up there. But his faith, his faith, his faith is so rich and strong. It doesn't matter the beginning, the middle, or the end. He's recognizing and honoring God to his last core. That's why we can't tithe. Because we're not believing God unto our core. Well, pastor, how am I supposed to do this? I get $10. My bills are six. I like to eat up $9 worth, but I can't. I only can do three. And then I need gas in my car, da, 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 for one. It only leaves me one. Now, of that one, you know I have to plan for Christmas. You know I've got to get my children some Christmas toys. So, Lord, all I'm going to have for you out of that $10 is a penny, but I'm going to give it to you in faith. No, don't look at how it looks. Look to the hills from which cometh your help. He will supply the sacrificial lamb. He shall supply the income to let you walk in abundance. He shall supply. If he wants you to be in a church building, he will build the building. He'll have the building donated. If he wants you to live in a neighborhood, he will present, present you before that neighborhood. If he wants you to have a relationship, he will make that relationship happen. My faith is back. It doesn't matter the shortcomings that I've had. It doesn't matter the times that I walked in disbelief. Is there anyone right now under the sound of my voice that can honestly say that I have walked in disbelief at times? I have questioned what God has asked of me to do. I have even tried to challenge sometimes and tell God that can't be right. Or here's a good one. You ever say this to yourself? That can't be God talking to me. That can't be God talking to me. Anybody out there? Can you honestly say you actually challenged God to say that can't be coming from God? There ain't no way in the world God going to tell me to take my son up to some barren mountain land where ain't nothing else up there. God knows what he's doing. Get out the way. Let go and let God. Hallelujah. I pray somebody's going to get blessed here today other than me because I know God is speaking to me. Hallelujah. So. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. And so it says, so they went both of them together. <laughs> Father, where is the lamb? 
Well, son, don't worry about it. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. You ever wonder why your children don't follow you? You often wonder why your children don't act like you? You often wonder why no matter how hard you pray that your children just don't mimic you? Well, maybe your faith needs to come back. Maybe you need to take the word of God and make it practical that it can become applicable in your life. So then when you're delivering that word of God to those children, they will actually see your level of faith by your actions, not by your lip service. Oh, my goodness. The Lord's talking to Pastor James today, y'all. See, I can't look at my yesterday anointing all the time. Oh, I remember we went to this such and such thing, and me and a few other pastors, we surrounded this lady who was uh, uh, in a wheelchair. We laid hands on her, and she began to walk. Well, when's the last time that's happened? Is there somebody around me sick? And I don't think that I possess the power of God to see them be healed or made whole. What is God really challenging us today, people of faith? Some of you think because you've gotten older in age and you don't move as fast, you don't run as fast, you, maybe you don't run at all, that God can't launch you, God can't still use you in your time of seasoning. The devil is a lie. Because wisdom is reverenced by God. You see, whatever you have, God gave it. That means God can use it. He just wants to know that you'll take that, that core essence of what he gave you. In this text, it's his only son. Oh, wait a minute. Where does that match? Oh, uh, for God so loved the world. What? That he gave his only begotten son. My God. Take a moment and just think on that. God did it. <laughs> God asked Abraham, what kind of heart do you have for me? What, where's your level of faith? Hey, Abraham, I'm going to test you today. I'm going to allow you to pass another test. You see, Abraham, because I'm going to make you father of nations. But you see, I've got to put this story in here that Pastor James, as hard-headed as he can be at times, I've got to let him see that he's got to not be so consumed with his wife, his children, the church, this and that. He's got to be consumed with me. And when he's consumed with me, I'm going to lead God and direct him. And he's going to take my, my word and he's going to take it and keep it practical, that it can become applicable in his life. And then when he stands before people of faith, he can make it deliverable, that they also can take it and apply the same process. Hallelujah. Isn't God so good? Hallelujah. Isn't God so good? Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. So now he says here, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. Verse 12 says, and he said, lay not thine hand upon thy, the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that Seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. What are we withholding from God, people of faith? Is it our money? Is it our cars? Is it our houses? Is it our relationships? Is, is it our, what is it? What is it that we put before God? What is it that we're not willing to just sacrifice and give up for God? My faith is back. Sure, I love my wife. Sure, I love my children, but I'm not going to love them above God. Sure, I love my community, but I'm not going to love my community above my love for God. Can God challenge us today? What is your level of faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. 
the evidence not yet seen. He didn't see the ram yet. He didn't see where the sacrifice was coming from. All he knew was his level of faith. Hallelujah. I want somebody to shout, my faith is back. I know it don't look right. I know it don't sound right. I know it don't all come together right. I know it just looks like it's tore up from the floor. Up. But if you will just dare yourself. I remember playing games as a child and I'd say, I double, triple, quadruple dog dare you. Get your faith back. What is it that we put ahead of God? I don't care if I get a dollar. I'll give it all to him because I know at the end of the day, I don't have to worry about one string of hair on my head. He's never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. So that means Hallelujah. if I will just press down, he will press in and then he will send me out Amen. to set the captives free. Anybody want to be used by God today? Just shout hallelujah. Just say my faith is back. My faith is back. My faith is back. See, when you can shout that out and you can tell the devil, Satan, get thee behind me. Satan want to tell you, hey, okay, all right, Jesus, if you so-called such and such, go ahead and jump off this mountaintop and then catch yourself before you hit the ground. We can look at that devil and say, devil, get thee behind me. The Lord will make my enemies like you, but unto a footstool. Mm, my God. Let's try to get through this today. Amen. And so in the word of God, <laughs> the, the angel calls down twice. Make sure he gets your attention. Abraham. Abraham, <laughs> don't lay a hand on the lad. Don't worry about it. We now see your level of faith. My God, are we pleased with you? You're willing to give up your only son. That's something that God himself does. You done went to a whole nother level with your faith. You didn't really showed up and now God is getting ready to show out. Hallelujah. I know that I'm talking to somebody. Somebody right now needs to just sit down, relax, let go, and let God. You just need to show up so God can show out. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. And so the word of God as we continue. In verse 13, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his th horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Somebody say, a ram in the bush. A ram in the doggone bush. Do you understand? The ram is running probably so doggone hard that he just slips and slides like you put soap water on your kitchen floor and you come in there and forget that it's over there. Your sink then overflowed itself and now you got soap water on the floor. When you come in on the floor, all you're going to do is whoop, slip and bang, fall down. And sometimes you can't even get out of that wherever you trip at. A ram in the doggone bush. Where was this ram at? Where was the answer at? When he's down at the bottom of the hillside and he tells the two servants, you all wait here. Me and the lad, we're going up and we'll be back. Where was the ram? Were they sitting back watching a hundred different cattle coming through the land? No. Where was the lamb? Your answer belongs in the hands of God. You don't see the ram in the bush. You're not supposed to see the ram in the bush. What we're supposed to do is hear what thus say the Lord. Hallelujah. Man, I get so excited. People say, well, Pastor, why you got to yell and scream? I don't know. Maybe I've been too quiet all my life. Maybe now God wants me to just shout hallelujah. When I look back over my life, and I see what God has been doing for me, through me, in me, by me, under me, over me. There's so many rams that he's placed in the bushes behind me. 
Now all I can do is say, my God, my God, thank you, Lord. So when I face the trials and tribulations that lay ahead of me, yeah, I look a little crazy because I'm telling the others, here, you wait right here. I'm going to go up here and do such and such a thing. And they're looking and saying, well, how are you going to bring the community together? You know, you got this and this and this going against you. You know, the people don't even like you. You know, the people wish you was dead. You know, the people want to ignore you and act like you don't even exist. But I can't look at that because I got to look toward the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Where is your level of faith? My faith is back. My faith is back. You see, you got to realize you're at the foot of the mountain. But God wants you to go to the top of the mountain. And he has an assignment for you. But guess what? That assignment is not just for you. It's for all of those who are looking on the sidelines watching you. He said, Father, now I know we got the wood. I'm checking it out right here. I know we got the fire. I see that. Where's the sacrifice? Where, 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 where's the answer at? And Abraham says, son, don't worry about all that nonsense. Don't get it twisted, shortcake. God is going to answer himself, for himself, by himself. And he says, all of a sudden, he's called out twice. Abraham. Abraham. See, when God sets you in motion, sometimes God does speak to you. But sometimes he has to put you on pause. I remember when I was a younger minister, God would share some really deep stuff with me. But it took me a while to learn when it was the right time to deliver that word. See, sometimes God is telling you, hey, I'm showing you this, but I don't want you to execute it right now. This this is not what I'm trying to do. I'm showing you something for another reason, for a greater cause. Bless the Lord. And in your life right now, under the sound of my voice, God has set some things in motion in your life that I know it doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't look right. But he set it in motion, not just for you to go through it, but he set it in motion for somebody else, that lad that's watching you, to be able to watch your level of faith and to watch how God delivers and places a ram in the bush that God get the ultimate glory. Oh my God. I pray this is blessing somebody today because I know this is really helping me in ways that I couldn't even express. So he says in verse 14, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. And it's, it, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. Now watch this now. And said, by myself have I sworn, said the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son. Now watch what he says again. Thine only son. See, God likes to show up and show out and really show you what he's doing. He likes to make sure that you really, really have a clear picture of what's going on. Like in the book of Job, when he's talking about Job, have you tried my good and faithful Job? Then he gives direct description of who Job is. So there's no doubt about we're talking about the right one. So we're talking about Abraham. Now, you got to picture this. Abraham went in obedience and took his only son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 17, that in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Why is it so important that you get your life together? Because God has birthed through you 
God has raised up in your camp mighty men and women of faith that God is going to call to set the captives free. But how will their level of faith be so great unless they first experience it through you? What about your coworkers? What about your family, your friends? I'm going to challenge you. Invite them. Don't invite them because this is the only place they can get spiritual growth. No. Invite them because here we are equipping the elect, the called of God, to be equipped to go out and compel the lost to come and to set the captives free. Here in this ministry, it is not about Pastor Sonny or Sister Kirsten. It is about you. What is God swelling up in you? What has God asked you to leave down at the foot of the mountain? What does God have for you at the top of the mountain? Where is that ram in the bush? Will you trust God today? Will you lay it all to the side and just say, Jesus, I hear you. Jesus, I feel your, 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 your hand pulling me. I feel your heart drawing me. I am willing to sacrifice I'm willing to let go of anything or anybody. My faith is back. I'm ready now to be a vessel used by God. Like the one song says, get right with God. He will show you how. He knows you're coming. He knows your middle. And he definitely knows your end. Won't you trust him today? What is it that you put ahead of God? What confuses your level of faith? Anything that has you confused, cut it off. Cut it off and just say, no, I've got to go with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if it's not calling on the name of Jesus... Well, I'm going to challenge you to go back and pray and say, Lord, show me who you are. Show me who I am. Take all of my past, take all of my shortcomings and lead me to where I need to be that my faith can come back. Show me where that ram in the bush is. Show me how when all else seems hopeless, let me see your hand. And Lord, I'll I'll serve you all the days of my life. And people of faith, when he does show up and show out, we've got to be faithful. We've got to be people of faith that we can come together and do what thus say the Lord. Hallelujah. So in closing, it says, And thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Wow. Oh, my goodness. My prayer is that your hearts are filled today with love, compassion, grace, peace, and joy. I'm so excited that those of you who are viewing this for the first time or if you hit replay for the 30th time, I pray that you've been blessed and I pray that this message blesses you because it sure did bless me. There's some people I need to leave down at the foot of the hill, y'all. There's some steps I need to take. There's somewhere that God has for me. And I've got to get to the point where I can allow those distractions to just go away. That I can stay focused and just trust. There's a ram in the bush awaiting me. I want to encourage all of those of you who have joined us today. Again, this is Pastor Sonny James. I'm so honored to serve with you today. And I challenge those of you who you know God is calling you. You know that there's a call upon your life. You know there's a ministry brewing inside of you. Don't let the enemy cheat you or cheat the God in you. Denounce that devil and tell him to get behind you. 
Tell him no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Believe God this day and tell the nation, my faith is back. Those of you who feel a tug at your heart, that's good. Those of you who God is reminding you of the things he's been telling you, that's good. Those of you who are willing and ready now to let go and let God to show up that he can show out, that's awesome. Those of you who find yourself without a church home, a church family, a ministry covering, I invite you right now to give me a call or reach out to me by email at Pastor Sonny James at gmail.com. That's Pastor P A S T O R S O N N Y J A M E S at gmail.com. Shoot me an email or inbox me here at Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries. Let's get together. Let's talk about what God is blessing you to do. Let's partner together to help set the captives free. You can also call me on my personal cell number. It's area code 513-487-8843. Now, I do want to admit, sometimes my phone might act a bit bootleg. I don't know what's going on with it. So if I don't answer the phone, if my voicemail isn't working, don't allow the enemy to distract us. Shoot me a text message that I can get that message and then I will call you directly back or shoot me an email. Just don't give the devil a foothold. Don't let him stop you from what God has for you. I want to partner with you. I want to share God's love and grace with you. I want to help you to get prepared for what God has for you. I'm also going to ask those of you who have a heart to give, a heart to share love in a financial way, we also have big goals and big dreams that we can be more of a blessing to the people of God all over the land. So I'm asking those of you who have a heart of compassion, not that you don't if you don't have it to give. So let's not let the enemy misread into anything here. But I'm asking you, partner with this ministry. Become a faith partner. Go on to our fundraising cash app um, apparatus through cash app. It's the dollar sign followed by Launch the Kingdom. Support this ministry that we can be a support to those that are in need and that we can build the kingdom uh, as God prescribes. But more than anything else, give of yourself. Give of your time and your resources. Partner with this ministry. We're creating a new corporate head um, as Kingdom Builder Ministries. And as we launch that ministry, I want you to know it's not about me. It's about the God in you. So I'm excited to partner with you. I just can't wait to see what God is going to do through you. I know there's ministries brewing up right now, even under the sound of my voice. Give me a call. Let's talk about what God has for you. Be a blessing to the kingdom of God, won't you? Bless God with all your heart, all your might, all your soul. Support this ministry. We would surely appreciate your faithfulness. Through our Cash App fundraising site, dollar sign, launch the kingdom. If everybody viewing this were to give just one dollar, can you imagine what we can do in the lives of those that God brings our way? I'm excited. I don't know about you, but as we close this message today, I'm really excited about hearing the testimonies next week of what God has done for you in these next challenging days, but how you're able to tell the enemy, my faith is back. And look that devil in the eye and say, I am the absolute best that God has to offer. And then throw in a little humor and tell him, don't get it twisted. Short cake. God bless you. This is Pastor Sonny James. I want to invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And then we'll have our benediction. And I will bid you well for now. Uh, midday during the week, we have words of encouragement, midday encouragement. Please log on to us live so that you can be encouraged during your week because we know the enemy comes like a thief in the night and he comes to try to distract us. 
So we want to be there to support you and to encourage you. So those of you right now, if you would just bow your heads and pray with me that God can really restore our faith. God can really come into us like never before. And I want to, uh, before I do so, I want to open the airways. I don't know if Sister Kirsten has anything that she would like to add. If not, that's fine. But then I want to just pray. Um, she says she doesn't, so we will move on. But I want to pray that God can come into our heart and God come into our life and then give us an all an opportunity to repent and give God an opportunity to set the captives free through our walk, through our life, through our vessels, through our testimony. So join me in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, I come before your throne of grace and mercy. Father, thank you for extending a heart of love and compassion towards me. Thank you, Father God, that I can come and repent of my shortcomings. I can come and acknowledge you in all ways. I can come and just admit, Father God, that I have fallen short. Maybe it's in my giving. Maybe it's in my heart to give. Maybe, Father God, I give to my family and friends, and I think that that means I'm giving unto you. Well, Father God, I want you to teach me today. I want you to receive me like never before. And I believe right now that Jesus Christ died on the cross. He died for me. He paid the ultimate price. He paid the ransom. So my job now is to accept Christ into my heart and to acknowledge him in all ways and to just give him the honor, the glory, and the praise. So right now before heaven and my peers, I repent of all of my shortcomings. I ask God to forgive me right now. I thank God for receiving me and accepting me as who I am and molding me in his own image. I accept Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. I love you and I thank you for loving me first. And right now, have your way in my life. Teach me now to be who you call me to be. I believe in my heart that you died, that I might have life and that life more abundantly. I confess and I'm willing to turn from my ways. I'm willing to look towards the hills from which cometh my help. Because Lord, now I'm, I'm understanding even more and more every day that my help truly comes from the Lord. Thank you for receiving me into your kingdom. Thank you for molding me Thank you for changing me. Thank you for challenging me. And thank you for your word. Now, oh God, I should know that I can rest and be comforted that when you should call me home, then I'm coming home because I am saved. Thank you, Father, for having your way on this day. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for blessing your people. And thank you for accepting me just as I am, forgiving me, just as I am, and launching me, just the way you see me to be. My faith is back. Now have your way, O oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wow. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I want to encourage you again. Reach out to us. If you need special prayer, we'll be here. We'll walk with you every step of the way. Let us partner with the ministry that God is swelling up in you. Support us in this effort. Support our fundraiser through Cash App, dollar sign, launch the kingdom. Pray for us as we pray for you. Let go, let God show up so he can show out. And throughout this day, Encourage yourself and just say, my faith is back. Hallelujah. God bless you. If we can have our benediction now from Sister Michelle Riddle, I'd be so grateful. Have a blessed week, people of faith. The benediction is coming from Jude, the 24th chapter, verses 13 and 25th verse. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you falling before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let the church say amen. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank God for all of you Hallelujah. to visit with us on this day. I'm so encouraged. Share this uh, tape or this video with somebody that you love and care about. And just remember, you are the absolute best that God has to offer. Don't get it twisted, shortcake. This is Pastor Sonny James. It's been a pleasure to worship with you on this day. God bless you. We look forward to you, hearing from you. Inbox us so we can communicate. Have a blessed week. Peace.